This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. SpaceX Starship updates, prototype schedule update and NASA orders Dragon XL. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship updates. Well, last Thursday's episode had a pretty gloomy ending with a possible closure due to a certain illness going around, this week's episode has a much more positive tone to it. It might contain the news we've all been waiting for. SpaceX has been focusing a lot of work on the launch site recently and as I mentioned on my last few episodes, this can only mean one thing. SpaceX is getting closer to a flight again. This time though, SpaceX won't let Starhopper do another field trip. This time it's about a much bigger prototype, Starship. What you can see in this video are three hydraulic presses being installed on the launch mount. SpaceX uses these to apply pressure to the thrust structure to simulate actual flight conditions more accurately while conducting cryo tests. Under actual launch conditions, engines would apply a lot of pressure to the underside of the rocket and this is where the hydraulic presses come in. They push against the tank section with incredible force to simulate what a rocket engine would otherwise do. How much pressure three Raptor engines are able to apply to the thrust section and how much therefore will have to be simulated can be seen if we do a closer examination of the mounting base for the three hydraulic presses. It's a massive slab of steel built to withstand a lot of force. It is resting on three strong metal beams that in return are mounted to the base of the launch mount itself. Each hydraulic press is as large as a standing worker, which makes them roughly the same size as a Raptor engine. Last time we saw something similar, SpaceX only used one hydraulic press. So this is quite the increase of confidence being put into the Starship Serial No. 3 thrust section as well. This time it will have to endure pressure levels a lot closer to launch conditions. SpaceX has also been very busy modifying the existing plumbing further to accommodate the different setup present on serial number 3. SpaceX will have to make that prototype fit onto the launch mount. Starhopper on the other hand is still a bit of a mystery. Last week saw lots of digging and trenching under and right next to it and the week before even saw speakers being attached to the underside. The weekend has shown that there definitely won't be a flame diverter under it now and so Starhopper still keeps puzzling me. If you have any idea how speakers, more concrete under it and a trench leading towards it fit together, let me know in the comments. I am eager to hear your thoughts. Looking at the construction site, SpaceX has been equally busy since the last episode. The Starship Serial No. 3 tank section is fully stacked including an engine bay. SpaceX did this the night before I released the episode, which is another testimony of the pace they've been showing this year. On Sunday then, SpaceX used a road closure to move the serial number 3 tank stack to the launch site in preparation for future cryo testing. We've seen this many times and many times this only led to a blown up test article in return. This time it seems different though. Complex changes have been made to the thrust section involving a badly designed thrust puck and the approach of three hydraulic presses under the test stand is new as well. If this upcoming test, likely to be performed this week, does work out, we're in for the next big milestones. Until then, we'll have a few things to happen though. A tank section won't fly on its own. In preparation for what's to come after the tank section cryo test, SpaceX has been polishing the serial number 3 nose cone for a while now. Welds have been flattened and work has been going on on the inside as well. Besides the nose cone, there is no sign yet of new canard and lower fins to be installed on the Starship prototype. Raceways are still missing on the tank section and on the fairing section and as of recording the episode we've not seen any Raptors on site either. Musk has confirmed by now that the missing downcomer has already been installed on the inside of the tank section. No one was able to spot it so it might have been done indoors. Nonetheless this would largely finish the internal structure of the tank section. Musk has also stated on Twitter that the leg design will be changed again. In this picture of serial number 3 on the test stand, you can see the legs SpaceX is planning to use on the upcoming 150 meter hop. The hinges you can see here will flip out and lock into place with these locks here. 
and the leg itself, which you can see up here, will then be pointing down slightly on the outside of the rocket's outer hull. It's most likely though that these are not anywhere near the final solution to be used on a possible Mars landing in the future. So work goes on in Boca Chica despite the Cameron County shutdown and SpaceX is able to keep the momentum going for now. This goes out to all the workers on site. Stay safe and thank you so much for all the work you're doing for SpaceX and for the rest of the world even in these strange times. You rock. Prototype schedule update. But what will happen next and when exactly will it happen? Elon Musk is known for his enthusiastic timelines and sometimes it feels like he's over-exaggerating when stating the deadlines for his next milestones. For example, at the last Starship presentation, held in September of 2019, Elon Musk stated that Raptor production would be up to one per day in Q1 of 2020. Testing in McGregor is almost daily right now, but it's hard to tell if all those tests are from Raptor engines. The last confirmed engine number was 18 a few weeks ago, so it's safe to say that SpaceX has not reached this goal as of now. A lot of Raptors will be needed this year, if SpaceX wants to get super heavy on the way as it will need 37 of these beasts. Musk also stated back then that the first super heavy booster would be built after Starship Mark 3 and 4. Since SpaceX has changed the name schemes to serial numbers, in theory serial number 3 should already be Mark 4 in the old name scheme. Even if we keep the numbers, serial number 4 is already on the horizon and there's still nothing new about a super heavy serial number 1. So this milestone from last year's presentation is likely to not be on time as well. In the latest virtual flyover done by Alex Rex, you can see how far SpaceX has come since then. The facility has basically turned from a backyard construction site to a large and more and more well organized production line for Starship prototypes. But what about the Starship prototype timeline? Musk stated back then that it would only take SpaceX one to two months to perform the 20 km hop. That was six months ago. So when will it happen? On February 2nd of this year, SpaceX finally filed for an FCC permit to do a 20 km test flight out of Boca Chica not earlier than March 16th. These so-called NET dates are normally a pretty reliable indicator for internal plans. Add a week or two and you get the actual launch dates most of the time. Now if we add two weeks to that date, we end up today. So when is it going to happen, you might ask? And the answer to that would be very soon. On March 26th, Cameron County announced new road closures for Highway 4, going past the construction and the launch site. For those not familiar with the procedure, this is what's needed for SpaceX to be able to either move test articles between the construction and the launch site or for actual tests. One of those closures has already been used to move the Starship serial number 3 tank section to the launch site on Sunday, so all is ready for a test. What kind of test though? There have been exhibits attached to the latest road closure announcements clarifying on the purposes. And here comes the big one. On April 1st, with backup dates on the 2nd and the 3rd, SpaceX is planning to do static fires at the launch site. Static fires normally are the final tests before a planned launch. You check the whole system. You fuel the rocket, light the engines and see if there are any surprises showing up while doing it. Before that though, SpaceX will most likely conduct a cryogenic test of the tank section again as we already saw the hydraulic presses being installed on the launch mount. And this is what the second set of road closures seems to be for. A 150 meter hop test with a Starship. Can you believe it? The exhibit states that SpaceX will be conducting a Starship flight with a primary test date on April 6th between 9am and 11.59pm with backup dates on April 7th and 8th. It's not the 20 km test flight yet, but it would mean that we might finally see a Starship fly, not a Starhopper. If it at all happens, I'll of course be streaming the launch event here on my channel as it's something we definitely don't want to miss. Diehard fans including me have been waiting for this moment for years now and it would be a dream come true after all those failed pressure tests in the recent past. It would be roughly the same height as what Starhopper achieved on its last test with the difference of a Starship being much bigger with triple the thrust output from three Raptor engines. 
If this tank section actually passes the cryo test, we would finally see some Raptors return to the launch site. This would be a huge milestone for SpaceX and the Starship program. And if that 150 meter hop goes as planned, the next milestone would be the 20 kilometer flight with serial number 4, which is already being built. And after that comes the orbital flight. NASA orders Dragon XL. Artemis is progressing further, and along the way, NASA is getting partners ready to support the gigantic efforts needed to fulfill their plan, and SpaceX got an invitation to the party. At the end of last week, NASA announced the GLS, or Gateway Logistics Services. Even though the Lunar Gateway has recently been taken out of the plans for a 2024 lunar mission, NASA still seems to be very much interested in building it. Since SpaceX has built a lot of trust as a cargo supplier to the ISS, they were NASA's first pick when it comes to supporting the Lunar Space Station or Gateway. The capsule itself is capable of delivering 5 metric tons of cargo to lunar orbit, riding on top of a Falcon Heavy. In this artist's rendering, done by Stanley Creative and provided by him for today's show, you can see one of the possible ways the capsule would be riding on top of the rocket. Once in space, the capsule would separate from the Falcon Heavy upper stage, flip around and continue towards the moon. It will be capable of fully autonomous docking, in the same way the Dragon 2 capsules are, and after delivering its cargo, it would then autonomously dispose itself. The most likely variant here would be a graveyard orbit around the moon. As burning it up is not an option because the moon has no atmosphere and a return back to Earth just for disposal would minimize its payload capacity drastically. The whole GLS contract is worth $7 billion and it's very likely that NASA will invite more partners into the contract to have redundancy if one spacecraft is not able to fly for whatever reason. Dragon XL is based on Dragon hardware which means that it will use a lot of the internal systems found on today's Dragon 2 capsules. Systems like power generation, docking and avionics from Dragon 2 will be implemented into the new form factor. This gives SpaceX the advantage of already having developed the majority of systems, reducing development cost and time significantly. It's not known yet if or when Gateway will be built, but having SpaceX on board as one of the cargo suppliers doesn't make the plan look worse. It will provide SpaceX with extra money and NASA with a very reliable partner for the Artemis program. It's a perfect example for SpaceX's continuing efforts to reach their goals, step by step with milestones in between that lead up to the desired end result. And it's basically the only solid way to reach a goal. If you're struggling with your learning goals, maybe you should adapt that approach, and today's sponsor might be the perfect tool for it. Their step by step approach is very similar to what you'd see on a SpaceX development project. You set yourself a goal that so far seemed out of reach and then you follow a plan. You accomplish milestones and you achieve your end goal. Brilliant takes you by the hand and leads you through the most complex topics such as neural networking or gravitational physics. Interactive content and innovative structuring make it easy to follow the courses all the way to the end and achieve your set goals. Improve your knowledge and get ready for new challenges every day. To accomplish your set goals and at the same time support What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up to get access to over 60 interactive courses for free. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 to join up through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Get ready for new challenges with Brilliant. Links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? What will Starhopper be used for and will serial number 3 finally pass the cryo test to be the first starship to take flight? As always, tell me in the comments. Episode 81 done and many more to come. When I started this channel only 10 months ago, I would have never thought to get such a strong backing from the community. Over time there have been so many showing up willing to support my endeavors with ideas, help and funding. What about it wouldn't be the same without these people. So show some love in the comments and maybe consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member yourself. And as always there are new members to the Y army. Everyone please give a warm welcome to Carmen Napo and many others. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It and now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. 
It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny, and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. So work goes on in Boca Chica despite the Cameron Shanti... Shanti cutdown? <laughs> Prototype! <laughs> Feels like he's over exaggerating. <laughs> Today of last week? What? And if that 150 kilometer... What? <laughs>